Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final video introducing you to supply side policies. So what we've got on this screen is just a little bit of a summary of some of the supply side concerns in the UK and I'm just going to pick up a couple of these. So on the top left, the UK suffers from a persistent productivity gap and we're going to see some of the numbers in a moment. Um, there's quite a lot of evidence that there are high rates of unemployment amongst the young, uh, a very poor um, current account performance, as I'm sure you know, um, a widening regional divide and really quite low rates of research and development and investment compared with some of our trading partners. So here is the NEAT data that I mentioned briefly earlier. So NEAT, not in employment, education or training. And the key question we have for you here is why does this affect the economy's supply side? Have a little go at this and maybe suggest your answers to your teachers and make sure you're along the right lines. Right, the next chart I've got for you here is the UK's R and D spending. And this is really quite low compared with some of our competitor countries. And you'll see from the screen, there's a target for 2027 um, to try and hit 2.4% of GDP. So that's pretty well double what we've got here. Um, the highest amounts of R&D are in sectors such as pharmaceutical, automotive, aerospace, IT, that sort of thing. And there are really well performing industries and uh, higher education, as you can see at the bottom of the screen here, uh, accounts for about a quarter of all of UK R&D spend. Um, on this next screen, we've got inactivity rates. So inactivity is someone that isn't employed and neither are they actively looking for work. So they're not unemployed either. They sit outside of the labour force. Two little tasks for you here. Pause the video for a moment and see what you come up with here. So first of all, can you describe the data? That's a really key task for an economist. And what explanations can you come up with? Well, I think when I look at this data, it's really not that difficult to explain why the inactivity rate is higher quite significantly higher in fact for women than it is for men. So most people will come up with it is still much more use, much more usual for women to undertake the childcare roles um, in a family. But I think people often forget as well that, that it is increasingly common that uh, people, often women, not always, obviously, are looking after elderly relatives as well. Right, this chart here looks at regional differences and the regional differences in inactivity are really quite marked here. So again, another little task for you. What do you think might explain these differences. Pause the video, have a little go at this, come back when you're done. Um, well, there's lots of explanations we might give 
here we know there's quite big regional differences in income for example we know there's quite close links between income and health and one reason for people being economically inactive is that they're simply not well enough to work um, it's possible um, that some of these are discouraged workers so if we've got regional pockets of quite high structural unemployment that could be the outcome and there's some evidence too that inactivity is much higher in groups of people with um, less fewer um, qualifications or qualifications at lower levels so again we, we've got regional differences in um, education so inequality in education then these differences here wouldn't be terribly surprising so the next chart shows us productivity, shows it as an index, and you can see at the top here the productivity puzzle. So the productivity puzzle um, refers to the period after the last recession and why productivity growth has been so disappointing since then. And the question I've got for you here is why is it that productivity is so important for economic growth? So again, just pause the video for a moment. Um, just think about this. Now, I don't think this, this question is terribly um, difficult. In fact, productivity improves the quality of your factors of production. So if factors of production are getting more um, productive, then you can produce more goods and services without the quantity increasing at all. And in fact, um, we think it is one of the key determinants of long run growth. So um, why is productivity growth so poor? Why do we have this productivity puzzle? I think the reality is that we don't know with certainty, but these are some of the issues that could be contributory factors. Um, we know that in the UK investment is quite low possibly this is due to the banking crisis or other factors affecting the willingness or the ability of banks to lend um, innovation um, is quite slow in some sectors and particularly if that's process innovation that will link to your productivity um, we know there are skill shortages in certain key sectors linking to research and development and we know there are some sectors that are very concentrated so what that does is to remove the incentives for innovation and in some areas there's there's quite high spare capacity why would you um, invest in new capital which gives you the ability to incorporate um, your innovations why would you do that if you weren't running up against capacity constraints so I've got on this slide uh, then some of the advantages of higher productivity and the first one um, is that unit uh, costs are just going to be lower what that means is that you're going to be more price competitive it means that your profits can be higher and or you can pay higher wages as we've discussed um, long run growth your productive potential will be increasing and it gives you the possibility to release labour from some sectors that are performing well on their productivity and move them to others.
Right, the last task for you in this sector. Um, what are your ideas for improving productivity? What policy prescriptions would you suggest for the UK government? So I want you to have a go at that. Remember to include as many technical economic concepts as you can and justify your answers. When you've done that, show this to your teachers so you're sure you're along the right lines. There we are. That is the end of this series of videos introducing you to supply side policies.